bit of admin squad news. Um, here, Cal's had a, a bit of a setback. Yeah, he's had a setback with his with his calf. So, yeah, pr- probably not going to see him again this season, unfortunately. Uh, so it's been it's been tough on him. I know he's he's really frustrated as am I that you know he, he's he's desperate to get back and just keeps having you know setback after setback. So I think the important bit is we obviously support him, we get around him, and we make sure that you know whatever we can do to get him back, you know, fit for you know pre season is is obviously where the energy goes. And that's keeping people fit is, is half a manager's job it seems you've got a, a big medical department to, to try and help you with that but what do you do to is there a magic wand you can wave to, to try and keep the majority of your squad available for the majority of the season I think if there was you'd be an extremely wealthy person um, it's difficult In- injuries are part and parcel of it I, th- I think you're going to get them um, I think you, you know the recruitment that you do should try to minimise you know, I think you can do a lot of work pre players coming in to you know to make sure that all the background checks, the medicals, everything you do, there's a level of robustness um, uh, you know with players coming in. And of course then, then when they're in it's about how you manage them. So it's about you know the, the training program you deliver, it's about the right rest recovery, it's about you know keeping an eye on you know flags uh, in terms of people, you know, whether they be sore or mi- minutes are extremely high or whatever it might be. So there's a there's a whole combination of things. Like I said, the part and partial of it is about, you know, trying to Trying to keep them as low as possible, and, and having enough depth in the squad to, you know, when you do pick up the few injuries you've got, you know, you've got the quality there to come in. But I think it, it across the game, right? I think if you look across the game, there's so many. You know, I think Newcastle are going through a little bit in the minute in the Premier League, as of, you know, many other clubs. When you look at it, there's it, it just seems to be a common thing at the minute. There's so many, so many injuries across so many clubs. Any other sort of bumps, bruises, anything picked up from the weekend that's going to be a problem for for Wednesday night? No, no, I was thinking that, but no, no, everyone, everyone came through it okay. Uh, Tails and, and Rob Dickey have been out on the grass today, so tomorrow will be too soon for them, but they're, they're definitely getting closer, which is good news. Um, yeah, so apart from that, everyone's okay. Because that, as I was going to say, defensively is one area you've had not a lot of resources and, and you've been really not lucky, but that Rob and, and Zach have, have basically been there for pretty much all the entire time you've, you've been here, so you haven't had to worry about that, that part of the pitch. Yeah, no, Rob Rob and Zach have have obviously done terrifically well. You know, one to stay fit, but also their level, I think, has been extremely consistent. So it was obviously a blow to lose Rob, but like I said, for for many, many games before that, we were, you know, operating with, you know, what you'd say is two senior centre halves, and obviously Jamie as a youngster, you know, kind of shadowing that. And Hayden, I know, he's played played there at the weekend, George has played there, which is obviously why we we did roll to the to the back three as well so um, yeah, we've been fortunate but um, you know, at the same point it, it provides opportunity and I think what, what it's shown is the, you know, the way we coach that the lads can go between or a four or a five you know, from game to game or in game and, you know, and still be quite clear on what their roles are so uh, again I think it, you know, having that flexibility that adaptability you know, has got to be a strength of ours So just going to talk about defence because I think it's four clean sheets in the last five matches is there anything different in that? Because actually, you look quite solid at times before that, but maybe it was sloppy mistakes, little things happening. Is, is it that you've cut those out? Is, is there anything that you've done better to, to, to get that end result? I think that having time in the international break to work on it was, was key. I thought, um, yeah, you know, just, just being able to get on the grass and revisit and you know, coach the principles of how we want to defend um, and going over it, and, and definitely how the players have executed it. I think that element of, uh, like you said, the little bits getting the little bits right. Um, I, I, I do believe you, the little things lead to the big things. So if you do follow, a, you know, two or three small mistakes, it will lead to you know a big, a costly one. So for me, the, the lads have done a great job of, of that. Um, and I've never questioned the, the desire to defend. I know we've conceded goals at times, but I think you know when you look at it, I have to give the players credit. I think we actually defended set pieces well. We've defended the box well, and you know there are things that are fundamental to the game. There are things that you have to do every single time you step on the pitch. So. We've revisited work and yeah, the, the lads have done a good job of obviously uh, transferring that into games. And that, it, it just I think gives, not only the squad, but, but fans, everybody else, the belief that actually if you're under a little bit of pressure, you can get through it. You know, the, the weekend wasn't your best performance, but the clean sheet gives you a point. Yeah, I, I thought we showed a little bit of a, a different side to us. I think, you know, we've... We've had a few games where you, we win a couple and then you follow it up with you know a, a poor result. And to be fair, I thought you know we, we Max obviously did extremely well, but I thought we showed a you know a resilience to us, a, a fighting spirit, a, you know, like I said, a desire to defend our goal, which they're, they're, they're important, you know, hugely important in, in every game. Um, and, and sometimes you know we, we did that, I'd say, for most of the game against Ipswich, but a couple of little bits then cost you. So 
I think is, you know, we, we got away with it at the weekend, other times you won't. Um, it's part of football, I think, is trying to reduce and minimise as many of them errors as possible. And and then the other side, go and, go and be brave. You know, we, despite their chances, we actually had a couple of decent ones ourselves at the weekend. I think that's, as well as the defensive stuff's been, I think, you know, the, the last, especially the two before Sunderland, you know, with 28 shots in open play, which is, you know, a really good number. And that, that that's the bit as well. We want to we wanna defend well, but we also want to attack well. And that's 10 points from the last five matches, five left to go. Anything close to that kind of return will, will give a, a real, hopefully, sense of positivity going into to the break. I hope so, yeah. Uh, we, we've spoken about it. Putting in a block of eight was, was kind of the aim of, you know, after the national rate, eight to go, let's try and get as much out of it as we can so we can build for, you know, for next season and, and finish on a high. Um, and like I said, the players have done a really good job of that so far with the, the performances as well as the results. Um, and I did it. Uh, the, the big thing for me, if you look at it, you know, not just the last three games, even before that, there's there's been a you know a lot of positives. Of course, we had that, that challenging period, but there, even even around that, there was there was some, you know, just before the uh, the little blip that we had, there were some terrific results and performances. You know, in the FA Cup against Middlesbrough, against uh, Southampton at home. So, I think we we've shown it. It's now about how do you consistently do that? How do you you know, not go two, three, four games and then fall off. Is how do you now consistently now churn out um, results and performances for you know across much longer periods? At least, okay, you know, and we have a, a short time between now and the end of the season. But if you can do that between now and then, that is something to build on for for the next one. Yeah, definitely that. Definitely that. It's like I said, it's about that building that momentum, and and it doesn't change. It's t- taking each game as it comes. So we know tomorrow night will be you know a difficult game. Uh, uh, obviously, with the, the change in manager they had, um, you know, slightly different in what we play, faced up there when we played them away earlier in the season. So again, I think it's, it's making sure that, that the game plans there and then our, our action behaviours, you know, execute like we have done recently. And um, you've had it in a few matches recent where you're up against a team that is, you know, needs results to make sure they don't get themselves dragged into that relegation zone. That gives them a hunger, but it also puts a little bit of pressure on it. Is that something you can use, or is that something you consciously talk to the players about ahead of the match like that, or is it just treated like any other teams if they were mid-table? Yeah, I think we've spoken about bits around like the what what games might feel like and what the energy and atmosphere atmosphere might feel like, but I, th- I think where we have to get to is where so much energy goes on us in hitting our level, irrespective of the position of the opposition, where they are, what they're doing. I think it has to be about us. I think that that's the most important bit. I think that, you know, the international break was a good opportunity to kind of reset, refocus and, and kind of get back to that. It's us and, and believing in the work that we do, how we play. And again, I think that that will be the same message, of course. You know, for me, everybody's fighting for everything. So whether you're fighting to stay up, fighting to be the best version of yourself, fighting for momentum for, momentum for next season or fighting to get, whatever it is for me, is turn up and be the very best version of yourself. And that, that, that has to be habit daily. We have, to, we have to train like that, we have to recover like that and we have to turn up on match days and, and deliver like that as well. How much was the game December in December? How much will that be? I know I appreciate it's a different manager, but obviously pretty much the same group of players. Obviously they sold Wharton, but what, what, how much of a guide will that be for tomorrow night, do you think? Uh, they're a bit different. I think the work we've done, they look a little bit different in terms of their organisation, how they set up, how they defend, how they build. So, um, yeah, we, we've, we've, we've looked at it. We've, we've done the work on them. So I expect it to look a little bit different. Um, and then hopefully we've progressed, we've grown, we've evolved. I remember we obviously finished strong the last sort of 25 minutes of that, that game, the second half, didn't, didn't start the game great. So uh, for me, it's about, it's about making sure we show our progress. Was there anything from the match that you watch back or have watched back, obviously on a bus trip, but was there anything that stood out that perhaps you didn't think in the moment that was good or... Um, the amount of litter flying everywhere. Yeah, that was unbelievable, that, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's one of those, the conditions were extremely difficult. I think that big bits, uh, disconnect out of possession in terms of just what that looked like first half wasn't quite right. Um, and then second half, I, I thought we did a... A different job. We restricted them to much, much less in terms of what they had. Uh, uh, I thought we looked a little leggy as well, to be fair. Um, and again, I think the conditions probably played a part in that in terms of it was sticky and uh, wind, etc. So I think it's, it's, it's a case for me of uh, some good bits, some not so good bits. It's kind of you know when you look at the reflect on the whole week and go right, we took seven points from that week, which for me is a really good return. Um, it's to t- take the bits and quickly move on. When you say the disconnect out of possession, is that kind of the distances between players and yeah, front how they back. react to others? And yeah, so depth for the team. 
So in terms of the distance between your front line and the back line and, and where you give up space, obviously if they're pressing and they're dropping, there's a lot of space in between you, so it's hard to control space. If, you know, if for me, you should move collectively up the pitch, across the pitch and you know drop back on the pitch. So it's just that, that you know, disconnect. And did the subsequent system change enable that to be better then in the second half? Or was that as much the attitude of the players as well? Or what? No, I, I think it helped. Just the start positions, I thought it helped. So rather than Anis dropping back, we had Pringy jumping forward. So I think it, you know, and obviously the same on the other side. So it, it helped from that perspective in terms of the distances across the pitch and, uh, and up the pitch like I spoke about. So the, the, the system change, I thought, helped. And, you know, it probably just put people in slots they're slightly more comfortable in. Um, in terms of the three and the two that you started with and how you finished, and again, I know it's one of these where I'm, def I'm honestly not trying to second guess or <laughs> take the theme again. selection out of you, but with Hayden, obviously he looked, as you probably understand given where he's played, he looked more comfortable in the three than the two. Does that lead you to potentially lean more towards the three to accommodate that, or do you think Hayden can play in a two? Because he says yeah. he can, doesn't he? Yeah, I think he can, yeah. I think he can, to be fair. Um, and, and you need time to ad adapt and adjust. I think you only do... That's probably where, you know, getting in the rhythm of games, Zach and, and Rob have done a great job of it. And how we've rolled it in possession sometimes helps. But, yeah, I, I have no issues with, with Hayden in terms of that. I thought, and with you, I think he, he probably looked a little bit more comfortable second half when he was on the, the left of a three than, than first half. But, again, I, I wouldn't say that was just on Hayden. I'd say that was, you know, some, some people around it as well in terms of how, how we, you know look collectively more than just Hayden so yeah I've got I've got no issues I think he'll it, be able to play on the left of a four What do you think because he's obviously not the tallest of defenders which potentially may have held him back slightly I don't know but what what what, what qualities do you think he has that makes him a centre-back potentially in the in the near future Yeah I think I think how he covers the ground if you look at his, his speed over short distances and his aggression I think he you know, he gets tight to people well, you know, even even the game at the weekend, I thought, you know, in terms of how he steps in and goes tight. And I think, especially when you look at it, it'd be interesting to know, I don't actually know the numbers, but if you look, you know, the amount of long balls uh, and jewels in, in the championship, for me, would probably have reduced slightly over the, over the last few years when you look at the, you know, the amount of time teams now spending build-up and trying to dominate the ball. So when the game's on the, on the ground more, it then does become about the speed that you can cover distances at. So when you look at him, I think he does a good job of that. Um, you know, and he, he's able to step in and be aggressive. And then I think you flip it on his head, his quality in the ball's good as well. I think technically he's very good. So he, he also gives us that quality and build-up. Because I guess in a way, tapping into that, where you said before about, I don't know if you've necessarily meant this type of player, but the absence of attacking players, the number nine, if you like, the orthodox number nine, there's not as many of them around. So therefore centre-backs or defenders of Hayden's profile, because they're not having to play against those players as much yeah. become more prevalent. Yeah, well, you see Bellingham at the weekend, to be fair, he, he, I wouldn't say he's an out-and-out out no. nine in terms of how he drops in and, you know, quite a few teams, especially on goal kicks now, they, a lot of teams end up like a box in the middle where they, you know, Leicester did it, where they drop, you know, nine and ten in and try and leave the centre-back so they're not marking anybody. So I, I, I do think that in terms of, especially we want to be a pressing team that wants to get after it, so you need people that are quite front-footed and able to cover ground quickly. So I think that, and also having a left footer on the left helps. You know, it gives you that option of being able to play through round or, you know, hit the depth as well. So I do, I do think, yeah, he's, there's, he might go round again. He might go full circle where all of a sudden, you know, target men and profiles yeah. and being slightly more direct comes back in us. That's the, the the beauty of the game, right? But I do think at the minute he's, you know, I actually looked at today, obviously for his first, you know, real season in the in the championship and adjusting and you know having the, the schedule he's had. Aiden Aiden's done a good job, so still got still got bits to work on, still got you know areas to it that he needs to improve. But you know he's he's had a you know a decent level of experience for someone his age. Because he is like almost he's twenty one, which is ridiculous, really, given that sort of how accomplished he is as a footballer. Yeah, you forget quite quite a few how young they are. You know, even George. George is twenty four. So when you look at you know the level George has been hitting and the season he's had so far, touch with it continues for you know for someone at twenty four. I think he's he's been terrific. George been been delighted with how he's done. You know, again, quite often some extremely difficult wingers, tricky wingers. You know, going back to Leicester as well, he's he's done an outstanding job. So I think you know you go through the team. You know, with Knighty, with you know some of the other lads, it's, it's a young group that you know hopefully are going to only improve with the work that we do. On the number nine and the potential for maybe getting one 
in the summer or the desire to have i don't not ex specifically that but in that kind of mold um sorry it's going to be a transfer question but like at what stage of the recruitment are you at right now yeah we're looking so, at we're looking at profiles now so yeah we're doing we're doing our work on that side of it and then there's there's more meetings that need to happen to, to you know to see what we can do and what that looks like so that starts that, that it never stops that to be totally honest I think just my probably level of involvement increases the closer we get to a window obviously so I think when January shuts all energies into the, the, the team we get closer to the end of the season and you know in the last month we've had numerous meetings with the, the recruitment lads to be fair to sit down and look at players they, they do a good job of you know getting information across to us always so constantly watching video and you know doing background checks and, and trying to get ahead of speed of that and like I said then it's a case of obviously having a meeting to see what it looks like In a perfect world what sort of Attacking player, would you like without obviously saying? In a perfect, I'll, get, I'll take Haaland if you can get yeah, it'll be, it. It'll do a job. It'll do a job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think that for me, I think what, what, what you want in a squad is, bl is a blend of profiles. And again, I do think, you know, that someone that's powerful, you know, an element of explosivity, I think, you know, we've, yeah, Naki and Tommy are great and are, are excellent in terms of the profiles they are of you know, movements, taking up positions, linking play. But I think in terms of, you know, just having that option where you, you know, if you if you needed to, you know, bypass a press or you know, you know, physicality, I think you know that 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 costs right though. No? So uh, again, I think that's that's a case of obviously seeing what's out there. I don't I don't think there's a huge number of profiles. That's the challenge. I think obviously with the you know the the market now being able to go abroad with with that, it's obviously you know becomes a, an interesting option just purely from a from a cost perspective. So we'll uh, we'll do our work and see what we can find. And I guess that creates extra sort of caveats to it because you're going after players who's obviously potentially never played in England. So that adds to the thought process rather than taking someone from League One or Scotland or wherever. Yeah, there's a huge number of factors, I think, that go into it. I think you have to look at numerous aspects around, you know, how are they going to settle? How are they going to adjust? Um, no, that's, uh, for me, we do the same work on players that are already playing in England. So uh, I think you have to... Wherever they're from, going to the, you know the level of depth that you need to. Hence, the conversations have been going on a while. Um, so yeah, it's definitely an option. I think obviously I've worked with worked abroad and worked with you know many many uh, different nationalities, which I think I think helps because um, I think I definitely have an appreciation and understanding of what it's like to transition from country to country and you know how that looks, how, how long that can potentially take, and what things make it easier and smoother. So again, I think we, we for me it's, it's not ruling out anything. Um. I, I assume there will be the potential for players to be moved on or move on or in the summer. Is that something that's being considered or is it that more of a decision that is made at the end of the season because there's still enough games whereby opinions can be formed? Yeah, them discussions will start probably start to happen after the weekend. I think, you know, we wanted to... Uh... Especially, obviously, going into the international break, the run that we'd had with you know the, the number of games we we had in quick succession from Easter to obviously Saturday, we knew it was going to be quite heavy and intense. So you know, all energy's gone into the team and the lads. And then I think it's a case of obviously, you know, sitting down with you know myself, Brian, and, and conversations are constant. So it's not like it's just one meeting to finalise it. They're, they're, they've been ongoing for a little while. I think it's more just a you know kind of a, a, a you know meeting probably some point next week to go right. What 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 are we doing? Asked you about Jamie on Saturday. Um, just saw him in his dressing gown, actually, as he goes walking into <laughs> But um, are there any others sort of in the low, um, the 21s, maybe in the 18s, I don't know, who maybe might start to sort of come into the picture a little bit over the next four weeks, three to four weeks? Yeah, there's a few. Unfortunately, obviously, the lads, a lot of the lads picked up injuries. <laughs> So again, I think you know the the, the twenty ones are playing now. The eighteens are playing tomorrow, and we play tomorrow night. So you, you've also got to be able to fulfil the fixtures and and you know and try and be competitive in them. So um, yeah, it's, it's definitely I think in terms of something that you know I think we'll have lots of options. I think you know if you get tails back and you get Rob Dickey back, all of a sudden you know the, the you know the competition is high again. Um, but at the same point. Uh, I want young players to, you know, to, to be around it. I want them to have an opportunity and have a pathway here. And, and at the same point, you want them to earn it and fight for it. So, um, yeah, their, their bits will obviously assess game to game.